good evening dear viewers thank you so much for tuning in this is church of uganda family tv and this program is ask the ceo in case you're joining us for the very first time this happens every thursday from 8 to 9 p.m on this show we bring you people who have made their way to the top and we believe that their story will always have something it can trigger, something that it can communicate to anyone out there who is listening. Now, we will take a very short break, and when we return, I'll be introducing our guest tonight. Make no mistake, don't dare touch that dial. Do you know that you can now enjoy great enriching shows anywhere through the Family TV app? Here is how to download it. Open Play Store on your phone. Search for the Family TV app. Click Install. After installing it, open it and enjoy enriching content anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Family TV, enriching lives. Alright, uh, welcome back from that short break. This is Ask the CEO, a program that comes live to your living rooms every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. My name is Apollo Sabiti, your host. We have a guest. His name is Engineer Tumwebaze Ruben. He's also called Biaruhanga. Yeah. I must say it is a huge pleasure as well as a privilege to host you tonight. Right. It's also my honor. Could you please uh, say hello to the viewer? and then we will proceed with the show. Yeah, hello our dear viewers. It's a pleasure to be interacting with you this evening. Yeah, he's just as brief as that amazing man with a mathematical background. Like I said earlier, he is an engineer. Now, we would like to know his background, would like to know his story, but our punchline tonight is going to be excellence, career, excellence and along that path shall we pick the pulse of this man who has been moving companies moving kpis if you understand the language engineer tumwebaze like the common phrase goes in the modern era where does your story begin who is this light-skinned man, I like to crack a joke and say, people who share his skin complexion rarely find problems when power goes. Because <laughs> themselves, they are light in the house. Now, I would like to know, engineer, uh, where does your story begin from? Where do you come from uh, and growing up? That whole story. But we want to catch it when it is still tender. Take us down the memory lane. <laughs> uh, thank you, Apollo. Um, like you've heard, I'm Ruben Tumwebaze Biavanga. Uh, Ruben is not what I enjoy being called. I, 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 I love being called Lauben. Ah. Yeah, but you know, when I came to the university, <laughs> <laughs> when I came to the university, these girls started saying, what's your name, Lauben? How do you write it? Then every time I wrote it as R E U. -E ah, Ruben! <laughs> so I picked that. But once in a while I, I meet people who call me Ruben. Yeah. And I enjoy that. Uh, if my former boss uh, called me Ruben and I felt my mother was calling me. I, I hear you. I, yeah. I, I definitely hear you because I, for one, my father is, a, is, is also called uh, Ruben. Yeah, and, and oft oftentimes we we catch the Raubin. Yeah, Raub Raubin. It, yeah. it takes you back to where you are. Yeah. Uh, like we popularly call it in, in our ministry life that 
Mune yoksi wam. Yoku hinji ram. You know. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, the question you've asked where do I come from, where my story begins. I first of all I want to thank God that I'm I have an opportunity to share where I come from. Yeah. I I come from the beautiful hills of Kigezi and and seventy kilometers from the nearest civilization that is uh, the overseas, popularly called overseas people, that's across Lake Winyoni. Uh, I have two routes, you can go through Rubaya, mm. the, 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 the land of the now civilized, <laughs> where they used to say Mutuatu in Kawashimo used to be like fools many yeah. years ago. Mm. Wrong, of course, because they didn't know that it was creativity that made us try to ride the saw, the, um, the sewing machine. Yeah trying to cement the matoke so that weed doesn't come. <laughs> that was part of an innovative mind. Did that actually happen? I am not sure, but yeah. in the case it happened, yeah. really it was, it is, it is a sign of a vibrant, uh, creative society. They always say that there's never any smoke without yes. fire. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I love looking at it in that context because it's, it's in those deep villages where some of us derive our creativity from, derive our practical engineering um, mindset from. Mm. Uh, not because we studied it, yeah. but way before we even went to school, we, we made our toys, we, 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 we made our bicycles, those wooden bicycles. Yeah. You, you had all the tools fabricated by yourself, you are able to make a bicycle that can carry three jelly cans, mm. and you are proud of it. Um, uh, way before we even started doing relative motion in mathematics, we had done it. You remember those games of shooting birds? Yeah. You would see its speed, calculate it. Don't know know it. To... Therefore, you shoot it here and it will grab the bird. Relative motion, is that Newton? Yeah, the, the, all, those <laughs> all those things. Yeah. Then the, the, we used to have the, the, the shooting of rats, you know, in the villages. People go there and chase them. You have the path where they pass, and you see it speed, you really? shoot it. Yeah, you shoot it with balls. So all that, until I, I, I started relative <laughs> motion. And, I said, and wow. all this made sense. It made sense because, that, because we, you do it in applied math. Yeah. Not the theoretical math, not the pure, but applied math. Yeah. So we were now looking at the ship is coming from there. Down the, the river, something like that. The river yeah. that this carried. Yeah. See, these guys don't understand that for me, I understand the things very well. Yeah, yeah so I, I am from from Butanda. That's in the lowest. Uh, my sub county is Butanda. My church is Chinyamari Church of Uganda. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born on 11th May 1975. To to very, very uneducated parents. None of them ever saw a blackboard. Uh, to let uh, George Biaranga, and my mother is still alive, uh, win Biaranga. And really, from, from that family, none of my uncles, except one who is currently the LC2 chairperson of Tanda, went to school up to maybe P6, P5. And the, the journey started from there. I grew up seeing a glass searched house briefly as I was beginning to understand. Mm -hmm. Then the, my young father started put a, the iron sheets and we started from there. Mm -hmm. So in my family, I was among the first people to go to school. My grandfather's family. Uh, yeah. the, uh, not the great, old. My, my grandfather yeah. who had three wives. Uh, but when you go to his brothers, we had uh, the other family where Uncle George Wanitama comes from. Yeah. That one they had gone to school. Oh. So I can say I, I pioneered <laughs> the education. You can imagine how 70 kilometers of primitivity <laughs> meant. <sighs> yes, uh, at my age, really, That's just 46 crazy. years, to yeah. be the first person to go to school in the entire grandfather's family, not in your father's family. Yeah. Yeah, so I started from Chinyamari Primary School, mm. uh, from P1 to P3, we are sitting on, on bricks, yeah, and we used to make carpets, those the papaya sweet carpets, yeah. and the, that's where we, I studied all the seven years, 
yeah, from P1 to P7. I don't understand how the nursery school like, looks like. Even the church school, those <laughs> church schools weren't there. <laughs> yeah, so I had that chance of, of doing seven years in that rural primary school. And uh, really the village is interesting. My father became rich. Uh, you know, at 27 years, he had bought a, a truck. Mm. Uh, those Tatar rollies and everything. Oh. But that did not stop us living a normal role. Yeah. Because we're. Life yeah. And at P7, I had not seen an urban system. No yeah. pipe to water. I didn't know where the electricity happens apart from the torch and the electricity we are doing at P6. That's the kind of thing where we grew up in, mm -hmm. but very vibrant a community. We, we saw everything. Uh, Slaughtering, we by the time you finish P7, you can slot a goat, you can slot a chicken very well. Yeah, uh, and, and it used to be a privilege, I'm told. Yeah, it's a but privilege yeah, because they you, picked uh, on to, to slaughter a chicken yeah, for so, supper. So, where I was coming from, um, a family that worships uh, those other gods, popular yeah. called Nyabinji, I think gods for rich people, Nyabinji, people with many things. Because every time somebody lost, <laughs> well, they dropped everything. Because you have nothing to offer here. Yeah. So I grew up in that, so the health feeding was okay. But I think in my early years, I am told that I suffered from kwashiako. That's how primitive my, my parents were. Mm. I mean, just all those beans and everything. Yeah. I still had to get kwashiako. Right in the middle of abundance. Yes. And yet there is a thirst. For yeah, for, for nutrition protein. and everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's where I grew up in, in that village, mm. very free, you were able to do things, digging, planting things. So now by the time I finished P7, mm. I knew all the biology, I knew all the physics, you know, you can see with the math, that later I realized it was math that we were doing. Mm. We created our own different toys, we, we built those houses, we did everything. So. My first time to now, after finishing P7, I go to Kigas College of Tovere, uh, popularly known as Sinia. Yeah. It was a privilege. I got 13 in P7 at P7, and you can imagine I was the best. <laughs> no, but the, 13 for, for even by today's standard, for a school in, in that kind of Yes, setup. yeah. Uh, 13. I remember from P4, my father taught me to read. He had not gone to school, but he used to read a lot of books, Savage and Dabareva, they had nine series, that book. Then uh, he, he bought me a vernacular Bible and an English Bible. And he handed, the, he handed them over to me and said, this will teach you English. You read this and read this, compare. That's what he told me, that's people. A father who knows not much about what we call the Queen's language mm. offers to buy now engineer to mm -hmm. an English Bible mm -hmm. alongside the Ruchiga one. Mm -hmm. Quite an amazing story. Yeah. In case you just joined in, this is Ask the CEO. This program happens every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. and it is powered by Young and Flourishing. Let's get back to when you joined high school. Yeah. So so when I joined high school, I'm already coming from a culture where my father had pushed me to read. Yeah. So I was the best debater from my primary, yeah. with those wrong English. And uh, so I joined the guest college of Tobere and uh, I forgot and thought that I was still in my normal primary school. Then within three days, I, I participated in debate and that stopped in a any teasing around me, so any teasing was they would put him on the desk, debate for us. And debate for us. <laughs> that would be a very good. Yeah, debate. so that helped. Yeah. So it, it, it gave me confidence. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I, I perfected my part of my speech. And so my first time to go to Kawale was when I was going to Utovere. It's when I saw a tarmac road. I remember we used the Lake Mnyonyi at Rwakarawa. And then and uh, I was with the, one of my village mates who had been uh, 
in town before, mm. studying at Geza High School. So I saw Tamak Road. I used to think that Tamak Road was a cemented road like my mother's house. Why are there all these many stones? He laughed at me. So that was my journey. I see the pipe torture for the first time, yeah. electricity for the first time, a storage building for the first time, <laughs> eating three meals consistently at <laughs> the first time. <laughs> at Mutobe, I said, hey, this is, this is too much. This is, mm. Yeah. So me, I was really, really very excited. Mm. So I start there, and uh, being a villager, they used to bully us a lot. But I resolved that I can't play football like these guys. Mm. I may not discuss the videos, the films, the rainbows, yeah. and yeah. the Chuck notices yeah. like these guys. But they used, to, they used to talk of these things. I was seeing the TV for the first time, everything for the first time. But I said, I, 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 I know what I can do best. That is, I read my math, I read my books, this is what I came to do, so that I also get an area where to compete. So that's where my start, story started from. So senior one, I didn't perform well. First time, I, I, I only beat four students. <laughs> I was almost the last. The second time, I improved. Last time, by the time I, I joined senior two, I was like around the 16th. Then senior two, there were the story changed. It was a bust. Hey, I started being normal. The yeah. first thing, we used to have the, the first thing every time. Yeah. That was the wall of fame, mm -hmm. kind of. The first thing. Yeah. <laughs> you would be looking forward to see on the headmasters, we used to say Takarahuri in yeah. the inside. Yeah. You put everywhere the first thing. first thing. So I used to be there around fourth, third, like that. Yeah, so I kept moving. Uh, that confidence, yeah. which my father me and every evening he would be at home from his business trips maybe once a month he would have that, those discussions he would force you to stand and, and greet people and deliver a speech somehow wow <laughs> he would be having people who have come to drink and work and so in the evening we have that nice meal so each person would say something i am very sorry to cut you short engineer tomorrow as mm. right there where your confidence, you believe, is birthed. Mm -hmm. Tell us how much more today's parents, probably a parent who is watching us tonight, or may catch the link of the show much, much later. Mm -hmm. How important is that to, to instill that kind of confidence yeah. in a child, even when they are tender? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very important. We are there is nobody who is going to love your child more than you. There is nobody who is going to build confidence in your child more than you. Right now, with I'm, I'm now a social scientist. Interesting. Yeah, quite, quite. A self-acclaimed yeah. social scientist. And I've tested and I've confirmed that yeah. now I am. I do a lot of social observations. Uh, through my counseling career, both premarital and marriage, all those marriage activities, I've come to, to conclude, because I've observed parents who get time to engage with their children mm. end up getting confident children. And especially those who engage their children deliberately mm. and, 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 and building their confidence. That's what my father was doing. And, and I've seen a remarkable difference. All our children are confident. All my brothers and sisters are confident. They can speak in any environment mm. because of that. And, and so deliberately thinking through the path of your child is very important. And being available, I keep asking many men, when was the last time you had supper with your children? And during supper, what do you discuss? As simple as that. Yeah. And, and, and of course, in the Christian sense, how are your family altars? How, who drops your children yeah. if you have a chance? Yeah. Uh, From like me, I have to line up in a bank and pay my children's school fees as a point. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, these days we have online, yeah. so it is, yeah. it is helping a lot. And the moment the children are aware that you can discuss with them, it is very important. Every evening, like, we have to do a recap of how, on how the day was. All of us, we have to do accountability how the day was. Wow. And I would encourage all parents to do that. And, and it's very relieving to see children telling you, today I finished my goals, I did this, I went to play football, you know, what were your key observations, was there something strange? Yeah. 
and they put out those things and it's very amazing. If you are watching us and you're not challenged, I'm quite not sure what is probably going to challenge you. I mean uh, good here, by the way. And thank you so much for throwing that challenge. I would like to believe that whether it's a parent that's listening in or whether it is a child who is on the screen right now, you are picking something uh, from these guests tonight. We are in Kigezi College, Butobere, yeah. before we, we took a little time yeah. off to talk about being intentional about th this kind of parenting and, and the confidence. It yeah. was that talk that took us a little bit. Yeah. So we, we now go back to your life in Kigezi College, Butobere. So uh, at, at Kigezi College, Butobere, I did my order for there. And the mm. all the six, six years. years. And um, we, because I could not be good in other things, I chose to stay academic. But also, I had one unique thing. I used to write speeches for head boys ah. in Orevo. Those who wanted to stand, I would write speeches for them. I, I had a game of going to dictionary, pick those words. You know, they have the, yeah. those uh, ballistic words. Yeah. So I was also fond of all of that, and, the, and, and, and reading a lot. So I, I had that, that reading culture. So it helped me to read even amidst all my academic books. I would get the opportunity and get a book and read. So I had read a lot about Russia, those things. <laughs> Hitler. Yeah, those things. Yeah, very well. So I did, um, I finished my O level and went to A level. I did. Uh, PCM, physics, chemistry, and math. Uh, I was likely to become also the deep head boy of the yeah, you, you, you were never going to escape. Hey, that. I never missed being a head boy. <laughs> it was a tough competition, I yeah. think. And uh, but one thing, by when I went back to Kigas College of we really were struggling by that time. Uh, the standards were not so high. And I think that's where the self mastery started from. Wow. Understanding who you are. And uh, I don't know, up to now, I've never known where those Z statements came from. I, I, I mobilized my classmates. I said, you know, we are here. It's, uh, some of us will not make a choice to come here. Our parents brought us here. Yeah. We believe this is a good school. And uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have all the facilitations and teachers that are up to the tune that we want. Yeah. But the one game is we must go to the university. <coughs> Those are the statements. I mobilized them. Yeah. And uh, we formed these uh, science clubs, what, what. Okay? Yeah. And I, I went to the headmaster. And I hadn't even become head boy. I went to the headmaster and said, you know what? We want to support you. He had just come, yeah. James Akabuai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Zakabai, yeah. And I said, we want to support you. Okay? Man must have won. Hey, we want yeah. to support you. We know you're struggling, you not to get all the teachers we want, but support us. I said, yeah, we will support. You can believe you can't believe that you would give money to one of us to go and pick books from Kampala on a bus. Yeah? And he facilitated all those things. So we would at four in the night, we would all meet. You remember the geography, what used to be the geography, what? That big class. Yeah. Because we had students who were really poor in math. Some of us were like, right, we had done additional math. Oh, yeah. If you've so, done additional so math. So we are strong already, already then, yeah. whether we had teachers or not. Yeah. So we mobilized all of them. We would teach, we would work, we give you numbers to study for a whole week. Mm -hmm. Next week, you'll be the one to teach us. Yeah. At four in the night. And we did that for two years, and it helped us to excel, and we went to the university. We, ha we, we started hearing these phrases that the best teacher can only give you 25% if you don't read. So we are looking for the 75% where there is no teacher, and you can get it yourself. So we started now debating who do you understand yourself do you know where you're coming from don't join that group don't join that group because we had those guys again at the school 
Absolutely. Who were from different backgrounds, especially those from Kampara, from those rich families. Yeah. We are behaving differently. So we had to identify ourselves. Who are you? Can you master yourself and join a group that can enrich you? So at, at the end of the day, we started putting even those guys to come to us. And that's what the journey for self mastery started from understanding who you are. Wow. Self leadership. It's a very important thing. In, 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 in. in fact, leadership falls and rises, rises on the capacity and the quality of self leadership. Wow. And it doesn't matter at what level. And there is, no, there is no form of books or coaching that can replace that. Self leadership is important. Who are you? What are your values? What is your purpose in life? So that has been evolving over time. So my, 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 my turning point number one was around that area. That's, that's, that's how I was going to come to <laughs> as, as you may have realized uh, ever since we started the show, he has tried to keep away his titles. Very, very humble man. But when we return from the break, we are going to know where he's currently plying his trade but also where has he worked. So then his story may actually hold even more water. Thank you for sticking by. This is Apollo Sabiti. The program is Ask the CEO that comes to you every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. And it is powered by Young and Flourishing. Don't go away. With 200 million people aged between 15 and 24, Africa has the youngest population in the world. This can either be an opportunity or a ticking time bomb. At Young and Flourishing Hub, we seek to turn these numbers into an opportunity for Africa to become a global leader. Join us every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. only on Church of Uganda Family TV as we take you through the discussion of different topics that will enable you to become world-class leaders and mentors, grow your finances, and become world-class innovators. Young and Flourishing, Transforming Africa. back from that short break this is ask the ceo and our guest tonight is engineer tumwewaze ruben biaruhanga is currently the managing director at uganda clays limited now before the break we didn't want to go down the path of titles but i'm afraid we have to come to that engineer and i hope you'll find a better part in your heart to pardon me I know you don't like titles, but for the interest of the viewer, someone who is watching us tonight, we would like to know your journey from uh, how you get into university, how you uh, delve into the marketplace, the workplaces you have transitioned through to where you are today. Okay. Uh, thank you, Apo. And... Like I said, it's a joy to be interacting with your dear viewers uh, this evening. Uh, from from Senior of Eagles College of Tobede, yeah. I joined university, I did mechanical engineering in 1996, was my first time to come to Kampara. What a journey, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was so exciting, yeah. intimidating, and... Uh, yeah, but my, my, my second turning point was on 25th of Feb, 1996, as I prepared to do my final exams, when students from Makere University came to, to our school to oh, preach the gospel of our Jesus Christ. The old students' uh, retreats? No, no, it was kind. Because I think an uh, youth missioners with Sam Vassinia, the hobbies. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. 1996. 25th of Feb. I remember the date very well because it was transformation. Yeah. It was a radical change. As a head boy, uh, the senior said, Hey, head boy, you have to joke. 
but that uh, is Gaia. Oh, hey, oh my Gaya. goodness. But so I, I, I come to the university yeah. with that excitement and that change of lifestyle mm. helped me to sojourn through the university life. Yeah. As I, 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 I studied my mechanical engineering at the same time as a missionary going out to preach the gospel and do evangelism. Mm. Across Western Which Uganda, university? Makere University. All the ivory to, tower. Yeah, to, to Makere University. It was another interesting journey, yeah. and within four years we, we graduated, and one year later I married my beautiful wife, yeah. Robin Achirawutunewaze. We have three wonderful boys. My first born is near three, the mechanical. So at the same university. The apple never <laughs> falls far away from the tree. <laughs> yeah, so we have three boys and and from that time I my first job <coughs> was at Century Bottling for like few months and forty thousand per month. For those of for, for those that's Coca-Cola aka hey, yeah, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Hey, Coca what, what is popularly known as Coca-Cola? Coca -Cola. I was there doing a small small like internship being paid forty thousand but also we were dealing with scripture union. So after one year, then I got a, a job at Hima Cement uh, in Kasese, where I worked for six and a half years, <coughs> going through ranks as assistant engineer, planning engineer, <coughs> and, and, and a methods engineer. Then I, I, I rejoined now the Central Bottling Company as oh. a trade services engineering manager. Then uh, later, 2009, I went to Uganda Christian University to start their business arm you called UC Holdings, where I worked for four years, mm -hmm. and went back to Hima Cement as, as head of industrial projects. Mm -hmm. I worked there for three years, then joined the uh, Uganda National Roads Authority as the, uh, the director for road infrastructure for, uh, protection. A new directorate by that by then yeah. that had just been formed mm -hmm. as part of the transformation journey at UNRA. Yeah. So I got a chance to be the pioneer director for that directorate. And and we are proud to have done a lot of transformational journey. Yeah. And, uh, and the works are evident yeah. they are written to, all over yeah, the to world. To quickly rush back through that journey of self mastery, studying, understanding who you are. Yeah. In two thousand three I was involved in a, in a lot of gossiping at workplace while in Hima Cement. You know, like young people, you're discussing management. And my wife, who is a social worker, and uh, kept challenging me that every time I see you with your friends, you are discussing how bad the management is, but are you sure you're, you're doing something right? Mm -hmm. Why can't you concentrate at your, at your career? I, I thought that was exciting. Yeah. And, 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 Little did I know that every time we discuss, these guys take these things to... Information to the management. Uh, so like within two weeks, you meet a manager, he swipes on you with a statement, yeah. which has a relationship to something that you are discussing. Mm. So with, with my advice and guidance from my wife, I sat and tried to understand who I was. Mm. I realized that naturally I'm a sanguine, therefore I can't stop talking. Yeah. So that was, I cannot stop talking. So how do I change the narrative? I said, okay, every time my friends come, I will be talking about personal life. I will be talking about things to do with motivation. Yeah, how do we plant trees? How do we do what? So I changed the story. <laughs> Must have been a game changer. <laughs> yes, because I realized that some winner will not stop what? Absolutely. Talking. Yeah. So why it's not change the narrative? Being born, it is, it yeah, is who you are. Oh, yeah. Instead of discussing people as, as a committed Christian, why not change? Yeah. And you begin to transform these friends of yours. So that was another transformation. Then I also realized, where do I want to go? I, I, I assessed all my senior engineers, mm -hmm. and none of them had a business mindset mm -hmm. for the kind of business we are doing. Yeah. They were all in the, last night, the machine broke down, did what? But every time a finance person came to talk, a marketing young boy came to talk, you'd see the CEO listening. Yeah. So I said, why is the difference? One is short range, another one is what? No, uh, wrong no range. range. So I decided to now add the professional stamina of myself. I did SCCA. I started in 2003 because I was doing long distance. I completed 2008. 
So I'm also an accountant at a high level. Wow. Then um, I did my master's from Edinburgh uh, Business School. And when I combined those, it's where I coined my management philosophy with, with, with church commitment, with, with understanding who I am, and all those studies mixed together. And my observation through all those organizations, I coined my transformational story that I can deploy to any new organization where I go to, whether department, or I'm fully in charge, to do radical changes. And my first point of application was when I went back to Hima Cement. Yeah. Within a short time, we did radical, radical changes in my department. The projects we did. When I went to Uganda National Roads Authority, my directorate, within two years, was winning the awards on, 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 on innovation, and all those things, and within the region, we achieved the best overroading uh, reduction from 55% to 4%. That even World Bank got shocked. How is it possible? They came and did investigation, they proved that it was true. Our overroaded tracks on our Ugandan roads, we had moved from 55% to 4%. And we had done a lot of innovations and the young generation that we popularly call what? what? This kind dot of generation. Com. Is it dot com or generation what? Something? Generation X. There's something they are calling these days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the youngest group around you. Yes, we, we went to the university and picked all these young people, young people, and over 200. You know, our ferry services in, in, in UNRWA became the best almost within the region. Because of the, the commitment, one, from the boss, yeah. but also understanding who you are mm -hmm. and being a social scientist now, after those observations, yeah. able to manage people and do change and deliver results. So I repeat that the life of excellence is one, you have to understand who you are yeah. and do what it takes to do to fill those gaps through education, through self-study, but also joining different, different groups, both professional mm -hmm. and also social groups. Mm -hmm. In 2016, I had to go into a group of national transformers. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, you do a six-month six course, you become an OXID, and you are called a zero-excuse leader. So you have no excuse. There's no space for... That's why I, I learned the game of that wherever you are, do, you have to be courageous to do radical transformation. I, I, now people keep calling me the the, 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 the former the format of what the, the, the authentic definition of faithfulness is multiplication. If you are not multiplying, you are not faithful. In this. No, you, it's simple. Yeah. In Mass Twenty Five, that's the definition. Yeah. On those guys who got talents. Yeah. The one who multiplied, they said, good and faithful servant. The guy who preserved, they say, wicked. <laughs> so we are not being called into a life of preservation. Even our own lives, we must radically transform. The other one who said, Master, I know you are a tough boss. <laughs> I know you're a tough boss. I know you're a tough boss. Yes. I was finding every reason to give excuse. Mm. So what has given me the courage mm. to, to try and do radical things, even when I don't have the energy? <clears throat> I've since then, through all these different associations, church and groups, I've had to, to now refine, mm. to refine my purpose. Mm. And it's simple. I've, I've, I've come to conclude that my purpose, whether you know it or not, whether you want it or not, is to mirror God's image, whatever I'm doing. And this doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or a Muslim or you're, you're, you're a Nyabi, yes. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Your purpose is to mirror God's what? Image. With the type of God you believe, if you represent him very well, and you know that he's, he's like my God now as a Christian, I know I serve a God of, of who created heaven and earth. I know that he's a transformational God. Yeah. So I mirror his image. He created me in his own image and likeness. Mm. So wherever I am, I must and do radical things to honor him. But the second is my pray his legacy. Yeah. I must my pray his legacy. People must know 
that, that this world belongs to a mighty God, that he created the world to be harnessed, yeah. to be subdued. Yeah. So if I'm not subduing, then I'm not multiplying yeah. his legacy. It is written. Uh, and he has provided everything. Mm. So I've come to, 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 to pick that and, and to support that I, I have done a study on our Lord's Prayer. I kept wondering, this Jesus Christ was talking to people who knew how to pray. Really, those guys knew how to pray better than him, by the way. Think about it. Those guys, even from the Old Testament, they would kneel and pray the whole day how many times. So they had no problem with the mechanics of prayer. prayer. But they had an issue of understanding what their mandate was. And in the Lord's Prayer, that's what Jesus Christ is telling me. These people, that when you pray, pray like this. Okay? Yeah. That our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. That is God's priority number one. That so his name he should be hallowed by whoever. Yeah. Whether you are in office as the managing director of Uganda Place or you are in the office of a father. Yeah. Because that's also that's an a, office. That's a huge responsibility. <laughs> yes. Or the office of a husband. <laughs> Or the office of a community person writing around <coughs> you're writing around the community. Yeah. You are a leader. You, 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 that's an office. You understand? Yeah. God's name must be hallowed. Whatever you touch, you're going to pay with momo, with what, with what. Yeah. Every speech, every action, are you hallowing God's name? And that is priority number one. Priority number two, may your kingdom come. The God who is the author. Of all the written works. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The, the, the works that we see around every creation is really properly offered. Bringing the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of justice, the kingdom of golden roots, golden what? Golden roads. Yeah. When you are in UNRWA and you are bringing that express highway, you are bringing the kingdom of God. When you bring Murago Hospital to excellence and you help this person, this person will give glory to God because you've brought the kingdom of God that is full of health, full of vibrant life. Yeah. When you are taking water to communities and people open that one and say, wow, when you are in that plane frying, yeah. honestly, you see the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's what Jesus wanted people to, to be vibrant about. May your kingdom, it's this person asking God, may your kingdom come. That's what I'm praying. May I persevere. Yeah. May I enable your kingdom to come in this rugged earth. Yeah. Okay? I'm a managing director. May your kingdom come as I pick this clay, which is dirty, which is rugged. And you are... My friend, imagine if I took a truck of, of clay to the minister's home. They would arrest me. Yeah. But if I go there with a truck of tiles, they would say, are you in the wrong place? Um, yeah. We'd not order for those <laughs> tiles. <laughs> the reception. <laughs> the reception really changes. Because the rugged clay, yeah. created by God with all the ingredients, has now been transformed yeah. to a beautiful thing. And when you look at it, you see Value the kingdom of God. Yeah. Look at how we are on this TV. Somebody's in his sitting room. Whoever created this TV, that was the kingdom activity. Yeah. May your kingdom come. And therefore, I am now able to reach to you, my viewers, because somehow. that's how the kingdom of God somehow looks like. Yeah. Okay, so if you're sitting in your sitting room and you're happily married, you are discussing with your children, creating that environment, and now the technology is bringing this to you, that's what we are being challenged to. And I understood that. Then this person will continue to ask, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this gospel, where people sit lazy and say, oh, we to know me, Guru, ours in heaven, we shall go there, as we find in First Thessalonians. They were waiting for Jesus Christ and refusing to work. It's not okay. The whole activity is here. And that's where I derive my value from. Mm. That when I'm doing those three priorities of God, here. I will conflict with the people. Yeah. But I need the daily bread. I see how the prayer is moving. Yeah. Give me my daily bread so that I now can sustain these three mandates. Mm. As I conflict with the people, forgive me. But also people as conflict, I also, also forgive them. 
and guide me not to fall into temptation as I execute these three mandates. And when I have done that, after I've done that, may this kingdom and may the glory and may the honor, those three, you really, yeah. those things that I have participated to bring on earth, yeah. people will be tempted to praise me and thank me. Now, in this Lord's Prayer, Jesus is saying, No, don't accept that. May this kingdom that has come, may this glory and honor be yours. May I remain as what? Just what? A humble vessel. Yeah. Forever and Forever. ever. Amen. And it is sealed. So, learning that I am to multiply God's legacy, I am to mirror God's image, okay? Multiply his legacy, mirror his image, and fulfill those three mandates and forcefully work hard mm. to make sure those three happen. Mm. Those have shaped my character in my later years. Mm. They've shaped my work ethic. Yeah. And I don't apologize and don't compromise. When I'm in my office, I know I'm there <laughs> to reflect God's image, to mirror his, to multiply his legacy, and make sure those three priorities are what? And if you are joining us, probably for the first time, our guest tonight is Engineer Tumwebaze, a man whose story begins from a place that is 70 kilometers away from civilization at the time he was born. He goes on to tell his story along pillars that have made him who he is today. He calls them the non-negotiables. Now, in this last part of the program, we would like to have your message crafted, customized, and then fit into the picture of an African youth. The transformation of Africa, what happens at Young and Flourishing is that we believe that the youth have a huge say in the transformation of Africa if it is going to happen. Now, we would like to request our engineer Tumwebaze Ruben, after hearing your story, the workplaces you've gone to, what are some of the things that you think the youth need to change? Of course, some of them you've already mentioned as you told your story, your pillars, but just so it is very clear, in caps and bold, what are some of those pillars? What are some of those things you need? You think the African youth needs to change about themselves for us to realize this transformation of Africa. Okay, uh, thank you very much. My first, uh, first of all, the African youth is, is uh, we are the majority. Let me still call myself youth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, two, two years ago I had to start 30 years from my age. <laughs> I was beginning to get worried of retirement. Yeah. What, what? I said, wait a minute. And my God was trying to, to, what? to respond at yeah. 44 years. Yeah. I haven't built my dream house. I haven't done what? I haven't done. I said, wait a minute. So quickly I had to slash my years by 20. So I went to 24. Yeah. And I had to pick... I looked at, at 24, what was I doing? I was in year three, and I picked all the modules of year three and read them in the context of 20 years after now, of course. Wow. I'm telling you, I had to redo engineering design, engineering math, engineering everything. That was my gift to make sure I become younger. So the gray hair disappeared. I'm only remaining size. Size, I'm still. <laughs> I want to come to your side. No, it is also, <coughs> it is also the expression of God's glory. No, 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 no. <laughs> the part of it is an industry. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. But I'm working on that one. But I had to reach, to reset mm. a lot of things. I, I had to start laughing more. Yeah. I had to start. It is there. Dancing more, <laughs> jumping more. And uh, two years ago, I had to go on a mission ground again, something like that. <coughs> so I'm now 26 years. Yeah, I hear you. So the youth, they need to acknowledge that the youth in Africa, they are gifted. Yeah. Both by nature and by the timing now. Yeah, the season. The season. Mm. Uh, by nature, because of the glory and the grammar that Africa has. Yeah. 
unfortunately that we are not aware of. The, the, the natural gifts, the fresh waters across the entire continent, the, 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 the beautiful climate, even if you talked of the desert up there, it's still beautiful than many, many what? other deserts that we have around here. And, and, and uh, the season now, we, we are the youngest continent in the whole world. Okay? And all other continents are moving very fast to maturity levels. We are just beginning. If you, if you draw the, 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 the graph, yeah. the, the Ogive graph, whatever. For us, we are still climbing. Actually, we are almost beginning. Uh, our education levels have gone high and are penetrating everywhere. So we have really vibrant youth with, uh, in a vibrant, natural, gifted atmosphere, yeah. continent. Yeah. And the, the all big, big superpowers are looking at us, which is a positive and a challenge. At the same time. Yeah, a challenge because if we keep at the same pace of thinking, of glorifying the lands beyond Africa and wanting to go and die in the Mediterranean and see that we are going to these funny countries which are, which don't have any, every time you go to those outside countries, I say, you know, what so are people coming to die for here? To <coughs> come and become a permanent slave. Yeah. Uh, look at a country like Uganda, you can't make it. And it's becoming better and better and better every other day. What we need to work on is one, our 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 ethical values. Yeah, our ethical stands, our ethical values, the way we interpret work, the way we interpret our wealth, <coughs> our interpretation of wealth. Because to me the biggest wealth that I've seen is you as a person. Yeah. You are the biggest yeah. the biggest wealth. Biggest. I'm yet to see what you can't do here and become rich. You can become rich. But it's because we have wrong, wrong understandings of what? Of what it means to become wealthy. Yeah. So having a good life, having a health life, having a, a socially vibrant life, a spiritually vibrant life is wealth number one. But also, we, 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 we as youth, we need to know that many Chinese are coming and Europe is pushing, America is pushing. How do we <coughs> leverage ourselves? <coughs> there are those things that we will do in the short term. Mm. There are those things we will not compete. Yeah. Uh, the, the other day I was challenging some graduates that if you are going to go to Coca-Cola and be proud that you are operating a machine, why can't you be proud that you are driving an actual truck? Because it's the same equipment. Yeah. So many of us, we are failing even to get entry to big jobs. Because one, we think that by being a graduate, you're entitled. Yeah, the attitude. We forget that there are easier ways, for example, and, I, and I'm telling all the youth who are still finding it hard to get jobs. Mm -hmm. With oil coming on board, with Uganda, that is a center of logistics by its location, with yeah, now geo. The, the, the geo location, with now DRC in part of East Africa, yeah. Uganda is going to be the hub, the logistics hub. And it comes with many opportunities. Yes. So if you are from my village now, entering total is a problem. Yeah. Entering, because look, Abati's children, my children, your children are likely to be going to these international schools and this blue college job they will go in. So if I'm a graduate from Chinyamari, where I come from, I better run a skill of driving a truck. It is easier for a company to employ you as a truck driver. And while I'm inside there, Using my social skills, and because I'm educated, it is easy to get a bigger job. Because all companies first do internal what? Uh, internal, internal, internal adverts. I hear you. Something like that. Hmm? Wow. Yeah. The Some, mindset. The mindset has to change. Being a titled, you know. Yeah. Now, us who have gotten a chance to be in these positions, us who have gotten a chance to be in these positions, we need to deliberately put programs liberate our youth. Absolutely. The way you employ them, the way you talk to them, but also setting like this program of young and what? Flourishing. And flourishing yeah. Is one of those great opportunities to encourage our people. Okay? But also agriculture is coming on board. I know people are pushing to make it sexy and make it exciting. Yes, we are going to do it. Yeah. 
most of us, I'm glad many young people at our level and grow and now, are all going into agriculture. Yeah. And you can make it. Yeah. I was looking the other day, if you just have 50 cows, well managed, giving you 20 liters per day, you are able to get 10 million per month. How many Ugandans have that in it? They are not probably, maybe probably they can't be 200 Ugandans who have yeah. net salary of 10 million. Yeah, absolutely. Something like that. So, aware of their power, aware of their availability, aware of the energy and the resources that we have, mm -hmm. and we work towards. But now on the moral side, the youth need to know that it's difficult to succeed if you are not morally okay. It doesn't matter who you're dealing with. And I'm not necessarily inviting people to come and be the way I am, but morals yeah. as they stand. Because mm. at workplace, people are looking at you. Mm. Secondly, the youth need to understand that every person they meet should be their marketing manager. Somebody should be able to market you. Yeah. So how do you present yourself? Yeah, what do you bring? To how, what do you bring? Place? The other day, I received 20 graduates in my office, and I asked all of them, in one year, how many of them had read a book? I guarantee only one person confessed that he had read a book. And when I probed what book he had been right. reading, it is a retake. <laughs> it's a retake that he's going to do because it has, has now been concentrating on that one. How do you expect to thrive without information? Yeah. How do you expect to thrive without reading? Then those who are already graduates and working, you need to, to know that Careers are changing. There are skills we are looking for. I will tell you, today we are paying more because of the value you bring and who you are than the education system. In my Uganda case, I have people earning three millions who just finished near five. Just because of the who value they, they bring. The value they bring. Yeah. That's it. Uh, in my Hima cement, there is a guy left there, he's earning four millions and his senior for dropout. But that guy is versatile, better than all the graduates. So these graduates who come and they are entitled, they are what? Forget. <laughs> so youth have also to stop being entitled. This is some tough love from a tough yet polite man. I hope the message has reached out. Thank you so much for keeping with us from when we started the show and until now. Unfortunately, time isn't our best ally. We hope that we'll be able to catch you next Sunday, next week rather, on Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m. My name is Apollo Sabiti, your host, and my guest, or rather our guest tonight, has been Engineer Tumwebaze Ruben. Just one phrase, a parting shot, it is called that you can live with someone who probably missed the better part of the show engineer. Wow. Um, quickly is to know, to understand that God understands only one language of faithfulness, and that's multiplication. So whoever is watching, whatever you are, multiply. Through your children, through your workplace, at your workplace, multiply. It can even be that simple system you're bringing on board. It can even be changing the way you clean your home. Mm. But make sure you are multiplying. All the, the gifts God has given you, multiply them and multiply. Every, whoever has a, an area of influence, use it and multiply. And may that be a source of your courage, mm. that you have no any other option mm. but to multiply then will you be called a faithful servant. Thank you very much, dear viewers. And with us, allow that it shall be that we multiply the idea of Africa's transformation next week on Thursday from 8 to 9.